On March 11th, the day before Bunny Folger was murdered, Bunny went to the Pickle Diner and had lunch with someone who upset her. We don't know who that person is. We only have an outline of their figure. They appear taller than Bunny. If we don't know who that person is, let's run through some suspects who are unlikely to have been that person at the diner. It wouldn't have been Uma. Uma was Bunny's friend. Bunny described this person as not a friend. It's unlikely that it was Lester or Ursula, since Bunny didn't mention it the next day when she saw them in the morning. It wouldn't have been Ivan. It's not likely to have been Lucy. I mean, wouldn't Bunny have mentioned something about Lucy talking to her at a diner to Charles when she saw him in the courtyard the next day? How many suspects fit the bill for who this person could be? Let's solve Only Murders in the Building, Season 2, Episode 5, The Tell. We'll be breaking down each episode for clues, suspects, and red herrings on our hunt to learn who killed Bunny Folger. Where is the original Rose Cooper painting? And who did Bunny have lunch with at the Pickle Diner? We're going to be switching up the order of the podcast a bit this week. Rather than ending on feedback, we're going to move that up so we can present our first grand unifying theory on how Bunny was killed. It doesn't answer all our questions, but it gets us close. Spoilers for the first season of Only Murders in the Building and the first five episodes of season two. If you haven't seen all 15 episodes, pause this video, watch the first five episodes of season two, and all of the Iran-Contra hearings. Fawn Hall, am I right, fellas? Come back and then listen to this podcast. It may be worse than Watergate, but I think it's about as interesting. In news this week, Yvonne wrote, Am I the only one who desperately wants the Angels with Flip Flop's hit song? Yvonne, you're in luck. You can get the song on YouTube with real fun retro video. You can also get it on all your favorite music platforms like Apple Music and Spotify. Go ahead and rock out. Pitta putta. On Twitter, our great friend Sean Gregan, who's at HeyRef on Twitter, he loved this episode and rated it 9 double G's out of 10. Wait, double G's? Oh, Greek gigolos. Ugh, wonderful, Sean. What do you guys rate this episode? Hit us up on our social media at Double PHQ on Twitter and Instagram, Facebook.com slash Double PHQ. That's the word double, the single letter P for podcast. HQ for headquarters at Double PHQ on Twitter and Instagram, Facebook.com slash Double PHQ. YouTubers, you know what to do. Comments. We want every comment. We want all your thoughts. We want your critiques of this podcast so we can make it better for everybody. This week, let's look at the double C, the credit clues, and the opening credit, double E, Easter egg, is a double L, lava lamp. Okay, that's enough of these doubles. But boy, is it just me, or are these credit clues becoming easier to find? Is there a second credit clue hidden in these credits? What do you guys think? In the closing credits, we got some face cards from the Son of Sam game, as well as Alice, mysterious Alice, in a puzzle piece. If you're listening on a podcast app like Apple Podcasts or Spotify, we really do need you to subscribe. It helps so, so much. If you're watching on a video platform like YouTube's, please, 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 please blast that like button like you're the son of Sam. Last week, we had over 275 likes on the video. Let's see if we can get even better, everybody. Hit that like. Have it be your tell. Before we run down the suspects, let's see what episode five taught us about our victim, Arconia board president, Bunny Folger. This week, it brings up a theory we had been talking about before. Did Bunny say savage or passage? One thing you can think about is think about how your mouth moves when you say the word passage or anything with a P in it, how your lips form a P. Here is Bunny, what the show gave us. What do you think? Is she saying passage or savage? This gets us to our other thought. Is 14 being misheard or misremembered by Mabel? I hope I pronounce this next listener's name correctly. Sharetha wrote, If the 14 is being misheard, could 14 actually be fountain? Fountain. There is a fountain in the courtyard of the Arconia. I love that idea. Other ideas we got from people were, Engineer Ara wrote, Whose apartment is 4B? As if not 14, but Bunny was saying 4B. What about apartment 4D? These are brilliant thoughts. Keep sending them, everybody. One thing we're just going to have to all accept is somehow apartment A, Bunny's apartment, is across the hall from apartment E, Mabel's aunt's apartment. So even though in Mabel's bathroom you can go, which seems to be against the outer wall of the Arconia, 
You can sneak through an air duct and get to Bunny's foyer. That's just how it works. Imaginary space movement here. Now back to the stuff we learned in this episode. Bunny had been going to the Pickle Diner regularly for seven years. She developed a connection with Ivan, so much so that she didn't just give him a lot of money. The envelope, which included the money, had the words, For Ivan, my favorite, XOXOXO. XOXO, just so you know, is an American abbreviation known as hugs and kisses. It's also an informal term used to express sincerity, faith, love, or good friendship at the end of a letter, email, or text message. Have you ever given a waiter a tip with the note XOXOXO? If so, would you give a podcast host a tip? I kid, I kid. On the suspect board this week, let's look at Jan. Now, Jan must have been in prison. She couldn't have stabbed Bunny Folger. However, in today's episode, she acts a bit like Dr. Hannibal Lecter in The Silence of the Lambs. The investigator goes to this hardened killer for help with insight on a case they're currently working on. Jan is obsessed with some double Bs. Okay, I'm still doing it. Blueberry bagels. On the first visit Charles gives her, she says, the last night we had together, we found our sweet spot. I assume she means this bagel place. Then later on, she says, it was warm and moist, and there was sweetness in every bite. Blueberry bagels. Bet they're still in the freezer. In my mind, this makes me think what else could be in that freezer? Evelyn the cat's leg? Now maybe this is just confirmation bias, because I think so many things point at Howard. Maybe I'm just seeing them point at Howard, so I need listeners for you to keep me honest. But once again, a lot of things Jan said pointed me towards Howard. She says of being a killer, she says, you really gotta know what you're doing. Jan reminds Charles of the way they used to go back and forth on the Tim Kono case and speculate. As we pointed out on our last podcast, Jan was always speculating about Howard. Jan says the killer composed the scene. They're a storyteller. They are an artist. And an artist never quits in the middle. They stick with it till the end. Finding a way to stay close to their work. Is someone staying close to you? Does someone have a new friend? Of course, in my Howard-obsessed mind, I think, well, wasn't Howard trying to get Mrs. Gambolini the bird to say, Howard's my friend? He just didn't include new friend in it. Guys, am I too focused on Howard? Please, I don't want Howard to be the killer. He makes me laugh too much. Help me get away from confirmation bias and find another way to look at this. Ivan the waiter. Ivan is Russian, and he provides the podcast trio with a list of his pickle diner regulars. In this episode, we saw Ivan return the money he got from Bunny. To do that, he had to get into the Arconia. Does a doorman Lester just let anybody in? Ivan said Bunny tipped him more than usual. She's been doing it more and more for seven years. Okay, let's look at the podcast superfans. And I know a lot of podcast superfans wanted us to take a long, hard look at superfan Marv. Now Marv, he knows about the secret passageways in the Arconia due to mold removal. Is that new? Didn't he know about that during Tim Kono's case? Now, his daughter came out recently. Could a dead man like a Facebook post? You're killing it, Marv. You're doing a great job. But does this in some way imply Marv is Alice's father, who she claimed was a plumber in Essex? Now, Marv also seems to have some stuff in front of him, like possibly a mask we saw one of the people in the secret passage wearing last week. Did Marv's mold or lack of cleaning up the mold cause the person to sneeze last week? And the final note, it was played as a laugh, but Marv said he had problems with women in authority. And Bunny was a lot of things, including a very powerful woman in authority. What do you guys think? Do the super fans need to be suspects? Write to us on our social media, at DoublePHQ on Twitter and Instagram, Facebook.com slash DoublePHQ. YouTube, leave those comments. We want to know what you think. Howard, my boy Howard, oh, I hate to do it. I keep being so focused on him. I can't escape him even in an episode where he doesn't appear. I see H plus H scribbled below the prison window and I think, Howard, were you here? I mentioned we're going to have a grand unifying theory at the end of the podcast. Sadly, the first one we're making is focusing on Howard being the killer. Dr. Grover Stanley. He's only appeared in one episode this season, but so many listeners keep mentioning it in the comments that I have to put it up. Remember, Bunny said 14, 14. Well, if you look at Mabel's mural, the 14th image on the mural is a drawing of Dr. Grover Stanley. As a therapist, he might know everybody's secrets. Teddy Demas. You are the father! He was a friend of Oliver's going back to the 1970s, 
but he couldn't have been that good of a friend. Not only does he cheat at the game Son of Sam in the 1970s, he is a cheater. Could Bunny have known about Teddy and Oliver's wife Roberta fooling around? She has the secret passageway. She could spy on people and find out. Was Teddy, who's been giving so much money to Oliver's projects, many of them lemons, was he doing it in a bizarre way to help his biological son, Will? Well, here's a double C crackpot corner here in the middle of the podcast. Maybe I'm just seeing things. Is it possible they're setting up Teddy Demas to be the victim who's murdered that they have to investigate in season three of Only Murders in the Building? Oliver would have a strong motive to kill Teddy. Will might have a motive to kill this person who was his true father who never came forward. Theo, we've already seen, has trouble with his dad, Teddy. Might he also have a motive? Teddy, I'd be watching your back. Let's go to Oliver's son, Will. Oh, no. This was terrible. Forget the murder mystery. Forget who did it. Forget the suspects. How did you guys feel when Will found out that he was really Teddy Demas' son? Is there any way this is a trick by evil Teddy? Could he switch a DNA test? There was a terrible setup for this earlier in the episode where Oliver said his grandson was a mathlete and it was hard to believe he's a blood relative. Well, he may not be. I've never suspected Will in either season. What do you guys think? Tell me why Will needs a closer look under the microscope. Alice Banks from the Third Arm Collective. All right, people, let's anagram that up. What can you spell with Third Arm Collective? Probably a lot of things. Alice, who knows if we should trust anything she said in this episode. Originally, she claimed to be from London and worked at the Rare Club. Now, she knows Norm from Cheers, so maybe that is more of a sign that she is here from America. Alice loved the idea of having her party in the Arconia at Mabel's place. Does Alice have an unhealthy obsession with the podcast host? First Mabel, and then watching obscure movies that Charles was in? In some scenes, Alice has her hair up. Does that mean she's always telling the truth in those scenes? At the end of the episode, Alice admits that she didn't go to Oxford. No one in her family is rich or in the arts. She claims to be the daughter from a plumber in Essex. We'll put it in the file, but I don't know if we can trust anything she said. Now, Alice probably was son of Sam in the game, but there's some real subtle things you need to watch. When Oliver says, and then there were three, this is around the 23 minute, 25 second mark. Should we suspect Alice, even if she was son of Sam in the game? Lucy didn't make an appearance this week. There's a lot of great feedback about her. We'll cover in our feedback section. Lenora did not appear in this episode. But I did have this thought thinking about the mysterious person in the secret passageway. Remember, Lenora can't really see very good straight ahead of her. She has great peripheral vision. Notice how this figure turns their head. While their head is turned away from us, does that mean their peripheral vision can see us or the camera or straight down the hallway perfectly? Am I reading too much into this turn? What do you guys think? Let's look at the big three. Oliver Putnam. Oliver does card tricks, and he's, again, been friends with Teddy since 1970s. I'm going to suspect this scene takes place in the 90s when Roberta and Teddy D were fooling around. But let's be honest, Will looks a bit old then, so they have been going at it for quite a while. Oliver's dog, Winnie, makes an appearance. Winnie is playing Toto in the production of The Wizard of Oz. Heck yeah, Winnie, get that stardom. There have been five generations of people in his family who've been into show business, Does Will make six, or is this horrible reveal true? What do you guys think? It's hard to suspect Charles of being involved in anything, but isn't it interesting that the film he appeared in, Encounter at Uppsala, highbrow film if there ever was one, but in that film, Charles played a peeping Tom. Isn't that what the person who architected the Arconia was, a peeping Tom? Isn't that a theme of the season? Is there any reason we should suspect Charles? Savage? Savage 1414? Bloody Mabel. Goodness gracious, Mabel. You have a huge grate where your closet is, which goes down pretty deep. Have you not accidentally dropped something down this grate and wondered where it goes? You haven't felt the draft coming up from the grate? How does she not realize there's a secret passageway in her house? Hmm. In The Secret Passageway, Mabel finds the Pickles Diner matches. And because they kept changing cards, it's tough to tell, but Mabel could have been the actual Son of Sam in this game. Before we get to our first grand unifying theory of who killed Bunny Folger, let's get to your feedback. 
outnumbered barbecue wrote Oscar. His father is a maintenance man, and he grew up in the building, so he knows the passages. Strange how he just disappeared. Pretty strange. But would Oscar have a reason to frame the Podcast 3? I still think Oscar could return, but him returning and being the killer? It'd be nice if there were some more clues that pointed towards that. Felix wrote, The Builder of the Arconia gives me H.H. Holmes vibes. The serial murder person. Now, if you don't know who H.H. Holmes is, go read the great novel, The Devil in the White City. It is uh, not really a novel, sorry. It's a nonfiction book that recounts what happened in the Chicago World's Fair and the terrible H.H. Holmes killer who lured people to his house, hidden compartments and hidden passageways in a big furnace down in the basement to burn and get rid of the evidence. I love the book, The Devil in the White City. Leonardo DiCaprio has been trying to get this made a long time. We thought he would be playing H.H. Holmes in the movie adaptation. Now, it looks like Keanu Reeves will be starring as H.H. Holmes in The Devil in the White City. But guess what? Here in America, it's going to be on Hulu. I assume around the world, it's going to be on Disney+. Plus. Everybody can rejoice. The digital channel you're watching Only Murders in the Building on will be the home of The Devil in the White City. Gabriel wrote, I'm still surprised Mabel didn't know about the secret passageways until Lucy revealed them, considering her whole thing was exploring the building with the Hardy Boys. How did she not discover them? Also, does no one else think it's weird that the passageways can only be accessed through a few apartments? Well, Gabriel, that is an interesting question. With secret passageways, we almost have to accept that they can just do things. Like certain apartments in the Arconia are on the other side of the hall. Does the secret passageway not reach them somehow? I don't think we're going to be able to understand the logic of these secret passageways too much. Daniel wrote, Good day from Australia. And Daniel had a question for everybody. He says, Why do you think Lucy didn't mention that she saw a possible killer in the passageway the night Bunny died? Why didn't she mention that to Charles or the group? Well, I got another question for everybody, Daniel. Why didn't Bunny mention secret passageways when Tim Kona was killed? Why aren't the police looking through the secret elevator since they had to have checked out Bunny's apartment after she died? Why did the police scuttle the Tim Kona coroner's report? Anybody have any great answers for these? Admittedly, I don't have a great answer for the coroner's report one in the grand unifying theory coming up. Not Joshua wrote, here's my theory. The killer is some type of love child between Lenora, who I believe is Rose Cooper, and maybe Charles's father, or another man. This would fit with the theme of the second season around family relationships and explain why Bunny recognized the killer. Furthermore, this would explain the killer's ability to navigate the secret hallways and sneak in and out of Charles's apartment to place evidence. Maz wrote, Killer 1 has a very distinctive walk, while Killer 2 does not. Maz, I assume you mean Killer 2 is the person we saw in the secret passageway. Maz also doesn't think Oscar could come back and be the killer because he doesn't have a distinctive walk. John wrote, My theory is the killer is someone who was working on the Brazos reboot. I think the killer was wearing one of those knit caps with Brazos emblazoned on it. And that's why Bunny says savage before she dies. Rocio wrote, I think the killer is Alice because she deals with art and wants that money. She also knows about Rose Cooper. The person that killed Bunny had a leather jacket on and looked thin by the shadow. Now, Rocio later says that the person in the passageway gave him Amy Schumer vibes. She's trying to play Jan in a movie and maybe trying to act mysterious and sneak around secret passageways. Rocio adds, Amy Schumer's clearly not afraid to get dirty since she got the painting from the dumpster. LOL. Nice work. I love the different type of feedback we can get, the conflicting type of feedback we can get. So people who don't think it's Lucy include Preska from BC, who wrote, One person I don't think it is, is Lucy. One, what reason would she have for killing Bunny, and why that painting? Two, she never tells Charles her series of events. Literally, we're seeing her own recollection of the events of that night. She didn't recollect killing Bunny. Okay, that's Preska's thought. But then we have two Lucy could be the killer comments. Here's Jessica who wrote, I've never trusted how the knife showed up in Charles's kitchen after Lucy comes over. What if Lucy was jealous of Mabel's relationship with Charles and wanted to kill her? This is a reach, but she goes to Mabel's apartment, but it's actually Bunny in the tie-dye hoodie, and that's who gets killed. Ooh, well, Jessica, that's going to tie into my grand unifying theory coming up in a bit. 
Peggy wrote, Lucy was jealous of Mabel being Charles' new adopted daughter figure and was the one who was waiting in Mabel's apartment to kill her. She killed Bunny by mistake. Pitta putta. Oh, man. What do you guys think? Is there any way sweet, innocent, 20-year-old actress, not exactly a teen, Lucy, is the killer? Give us that feedback we want to know. Write down the comments in YouTube. Tweet us at Double PHQ on Twitter and Instagram, Facebook.com slash Double PHQ. Go to our website, DoublePmedia.com. Send us an email to hello at DoublePmedia.com. All right, let's get to our grand unifying theory. Howard Morris is lonely. He writes a note about how frustrated and sad he is at being so lonely. The only thing in his life that brings him joy are his cats, including Evelyn. The cats have a great life. They can go into the secret passageway, sneak all around the building, have the time of their lives. Of course, because they can go all around the building, they sneak into people's apartments, like Tim Kono's, and he gets frustrated with them. Later, Tim gets killed. And then Evelyn dies. Howard is distraught. Charles and Mabel come to Howard's apartment, but it's not to commiserate and make him feel better, it's to interrogate him, and Howard later listens and hears that they name him a suspect on their podcast of Tim Kono's Killer. Now this is crazy. Howard can't be a killer, so he goes into the secret passageways where his cats goes, goes to Charles' apartment, and what does he find? The note, his lonely note, is up on the suspect board. He's on the suspect board. This is ridiculous. This is crazy. But the big thing he finds is what? Evelyn's leg. Somebody had gone into his apartment and taken Evelyn's leg, and now it's those podcasters who've done it. This is a bridge too far. Howard is frustrated. He's angry. He says, you're going to injure my pet? I'll injure your pet, and poisons Winnie the dog. But it doesn't stop the podcast three. There's no apology for breaking off Evelyn's leg. In fact, later on, there's a party in the courtyard for them. How disgusting. Howard has had enough. He's going to take his revenge on the people who broke off Evelyn's leg once and for all. He gets a knife from Oliver's kitchen. Knows there's going to be a party later that night, probably in Mabel's, he's heard them say. So he sneaks off towards Mabel's apartment. Meanwhile, a different person comes to Bunny's apartment, comes to the front door of Bunny's apartment, trying to get that painting. They bust in, they struggle with Bunny, but she scares them off somehow. Maybe Mrs. Gambolini scares them off a bit. Bunny is devastated. She's shocked. She calls the police and says, hey, I've been attacked in my apartment. There's some crazy hooded person attacking me in my apartment. Send the police here now. Detective Williams hears that call and realizes that this is the same apartment where the podcast three live. She sends them an anonymous text message, get out of the building now. Bunny, still shaken up from being attacked, goes to Mabel's apartment where she thinks the three are still celebrating their success. She goes into Mabel's apartment, but there's nobody there. Of course, there is someone there. Someone lurking in the corner. Someone who sees a woman walk in wearing a tie-dye hoodie and goes and stabs and stabs and stabs and stabs and stabs. And then Howard realizes he's killed Bunny. Not any of the podcast three, but Bunny. He sees all the blood and he faints and passes out, giving himself a black eye. He wakes up and then takes the knitting needles and stabs them into Bunny. He's got to cover his tracks. Then he runs off. For the rest of the time, Howard has to leave evidence at the podcast three's house in the hope they'll get arrested and take the fall for him. Now there's some holes in this theory. Why would Bunny say 14 and Savage? Those clues don't point to Howard at all. But to me, that would work as a how this whole thing went down. What do you guys think? That's our first unifying theory. We're going to be coming up with more in the days and weeks ahead. You know, last week, we had over 275 likes on the video on YouTube. Guys, let's see if we can break that record this week. Let's get more than 275 likes. Leave your comments. Let's do it. We're at the halfway point. Let's solve only murders in the building. See you guys on episode six.